On this channel, I teach a lot of jazz guitar lessons, but I also have a background in classical guitar. I studied it in college, I played it professionally, and I taught classical lessons for a long time, but I haven't done many classical guitar videos on this channel. So I'm starting a new seven part lesson series right now called Seven Easy Classical Guitar Songs for Beginners. This is part one. I'm gonna give you an introduction to classical guitar by teaching actual pieces of music, very simple beginner level pieces, and by giving you step-by-step -step exercises for how to work on them from the ground up. Each piece in this series features a different technique training and an element of expression needed to bring the music alive, which you can then apply to any other piece of music. I'll also do a harmonic analysis on each piece so we can see how a lot of classical music is based around just very simple chords that we're already familiar with. If you're wanting an introduction to classical guitar with some easy, playable, and enjoyable pieces to walk away with, then you are in the right place. You can download the sheet music and classical guitar tabs for all the pieces in this series for free. They're inside my solo guitar arrangement pack. Just click on the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon to get my arrangement pack for free. In this lesson, I will teach you the first piece out of seven, and we will talk about how to take advantage of dynamics to be more expressive. Let's get into it. I'm gonna perform the piece for you. I'll do a slow version at the very end of the lesson, something that you can practice along with, but right now I will perform it at a faster tempo so you can hear how it goes. Then we'll talk about some basic tone production advice for any finger style playing. We'll go over the finger numbers for the left and right hand, and we'll talk about anything we need to know about the sheet music that might be new to you. And then we will get into the seven exercises I've outlined for how to practice this from the ground up. We don't just wanna jump in and practice something willy nilly. We wanna have kind of a plan and a strategy for it that kind of guarantees our progress and our success. So I'll give you seven step-by-step -step exercises for how to work on this. Then we'll go over the expression element in this lesson, which is gonna be how to use dynamics to make the music sound more expressive. I will then have kind of a bonus tip on something very important for all fingerstyle and classical playing. Then we'll do a harmonic analysis, and at the very end, I'll do the slow demonstration that's meant for you to practice along with if you want to do that. This piece is just titled First Exercise on the E String. It's by Johann Kasper Mertz. He's an early Romantic era guitarist and composer. This was presumably just a simple study exercise that he composed for his students, so it's a great thing for us to study. Here is the demonstration of the piece. Since this is the first lesson in this series, I want to go over some basic tone production advice for any finger style playing, especially classical. Doesn't matter if you're using nails or not nails. I was playing without nails for five years and I just grew my nails back. Recently I did a video on that that you can check out. There's a link in the description to, to see my series about playing without nails and then playing with my nails again. Uh, so we want to do something called planting. So if you look at, we're going to do the, an exercise of this kind of thing to work on this piece. But when I'm playing either of these notes, the thumb or the middle finger, I'm securing myself on the string for a moment. Even if it seems like someone is playing fast, I can play consistently with the same volume and tone and timbre because I have this moment of securing myself and kind of checking is that gonna be the sound that I know it's gonna be? So that's called planting, and that is a tried and true technique that every classical player does. So make sure you give that a try and just give a moment of sitting on the string before you pluck it. In the sheet music here, you can see there's letters and numbers next to some of the notes. Uh, not all of them, but just some of them. Most sheet music will give you some and then stop just assuming that you know what to do after that. The numbers are easy. Your left hand numbers are the pointer finger is one, and then two, three, four. Thumb is nothing. So if you're a piano player, you're used to thumb being one, but one is the pointer finger. So easy enough for the fretting hand. And then for the plucking hand, P is the thumb, I is the index, so we can think of I as index, M is middle, and then A is the ring finger, which we don't see an A in this sheet music here, but that'll come up later in this series. So P, I, M, A, P, I, M, A, and that, those are gonna be the labels for your plucking hand. 
And let's take a look at the sheet music and then I'll give you the exercises and we'll really dig in. But just in case you're not familiar with some of this, tab is short for tablature and this is the easy way to start playing because the numbers give you exactly what frets to play on what strings. So you can, don't have to read this if you're brand new to this and you want to start reading tab or maybe you're comfortable with tab. Uh, that is the system there. So this is the A string or fifth string, so zero. This is the D string or fourth string and that is fret two, etc. Etc. A couple other things about the sheet music here. C stands for common time. That means four four time, which means there are four beats in each measure in each measure, four beats of quarter notes in each measure. And then I want to point out this little eight that is at the bottom of the treble clef here. This is called the treble clef, and there's a little eight there. Guitar is a transposing instrument, so actually we are playing an octave down. That's what this means. We're playing an octave down from where it's written. So if a piano played this, if someone who's great at sight reading and just sat down and played this on the piano it would be an everything would be an octave higher than what we play on the guitar so our open a string this note here is an octave lower than what's written on another instrument that's not transposing so that's quite interesting some people don't know that who've been playing for a long time and correct guitar sheet music should have that there to indicate that we are uh, playing an octave down if you're reading on like a lead sheet or something like the real book and you're playing jazz standards of course that's not going to have that there because it's not meant for guitarists uh, so it's just writing it at pitch and we can transpose ourselves if we're reading off of other sheet music so little tidbit of information there the last thing I want to point out in the sheet music before we get into the exercises is I want you to notice the multiple voices. There's a down stem here on these four notes and there's up stems on the same note and another note. So this is acting as both a bass line and a separate, it's as if two players are playing that note at once. So there's two voices, upper voice, lower voice, and there's a middle voice. So there's three parts. And that's the beautiful thing about solo guitar, meaning we're playing everything ourselves on one instrument, playing by ourselves. And classical guitar is so beautiful that we can play multiple parts at once. Here's the bass note ringing through here. Here's the melody notes up here. And then these three notes that have down stems are middle voices. So there is bass, melody and accompaniment or harmony inside. So three different parts and we're doing it all at once on the guitar. Just wanted you to take notice of that. It's a great thing to scan for when you're looking at new classical guitar sheet music. What are the independent voices? And we'll work more on how to bring those out and treat them differently throughout this series. Okay, ready for this? Let's do the exercises. I have seven of them for you to walk us from the ground up how to work on playing this. Of course, you can create a step-by-step uh, ways of practicing anything on your own. It's really great to take things in bite-sized chunks and work on the core fundamental skills that are needed to piece everything together. And that's exactly what I've done for every piece in this whole series. The first exercise out of seven for this piece is going to be playing with your thumb on the A string, open A, and then your middle finger on the high E string. That's it, that's the exercise. And I can't emphasize this enough that getting some right hand patterns or you know, what is happening in the sheet music, but just with the right hand, or plucking hand if you're playing the other way around, and sinking into that, listening to it, getting relaxed, getting the tone warm, getting the tone how you want it to, before diving in and trying to piece it all together. So this is exercise one. Even as I do that now to demonstrate, there are inconsistencies there that I'm not happy with, and I would be very glad to sit and practice this for 10 minutes just to get the tone exactly what I want to prevent some of that clicking sound that's happening um, and just the slight shifts that are happening sometimes. So most of the time I'm liking it, and then that there are a, a couple different sounds that were happening, and I would just really sit with that, kind of meditate on it. So that's exercise number one, and take that seriously. It'll make everything else much easier. Exercise number two is the same thing, but we're gonna rotate through all the strings. So I want you to do four beats per string and start on the lowest string and go one, two, three, four, switch strings. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Again, the, once I start doing this, and any little thing that I don't like happens, like on the top couple strings there, not happy with it. 
And my thumbnail's really short right now, so that makes it harder. If I wasn't filming this video right now and I tested that out, I would sit and work on it for a while. So it's not a small thing. Um, take it seriously, it'll make everything else easier, just make it sound better. Your plugging hand is the tone production, it's the poet, it is the, it is the expression of everything. And the fretting hand is what we focus on so much, but it's much more just the workhorse. It just needs to get to, then it needs to play lightly and not squeeze or anything like that, but it's much less involved in the expressive part. So the plugging hand matters so much. Okay, so now same thing, exercise three, and we're gonna do one beat per string. Maybe get it without looking if you feel comfortable trying that. If you're feeling like that's really easy, let's move on to exercise four. Exercise four is to play just the bass line with your thumb and nothing else. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Three, four. Three, four. Okay, really great to play things independently and get it in our head to hear it separately. So that is exercise four. See how we are slowly working up towards the piece and then we're gonna have an easier time once we get there, getting all the coordination down first. The next exercise is the bass line again with the M high E string in the middle, but not playing those filler measures. Okay, so this is measure five six, measure seven. And then the rest is just the bass line. Okay, so we're working our way up to it. We've worked on all these elements. We're adding it together. Let's do the next exercise. I wonder if you could guess what the next exercise is gonna be because we're piecing together all the coordination and elements we need for the piece. Well, we are gonna do just the right hand pattern of what the second measure is, those filler lines that we skipped before, okay? So it's exactly this, measure two, but just the plucking hand. Okay, but we're gonna do that with all the open strings. So do it on the low E, then A, then D. If you can't appreciate the sound of the guitar doing just that, your own guitar sound and tone, it's not gonna help much to start adding a bunch of notes and complexity and something more difficult. Try to enjoy the purity of that sound and your tone and your control in an exercise like that. The next exercise is exercise seven. We're gonna do that same thing, uh, but we are going to do each measure that it's actually used on. So measure two, just by itself. See the point of practicing this way? If you can't do this by itself and feel good about it, how are we gonna do it flying through the piece, right? When it's just unfolding in time. Okay, so measure four then is the same thing. Okay, measure six, take a second, figure out what those notes are, and just sit with this. Okay, measure eight is the same thing. And then we have measure 10, first measure of the bottom line of music. And that's all of them. I just want you to go through them, repeat them, uh, work on each of those, and we're ready to piece it all together now. And now we can work on it in the way that you might think you would just jump in and work on a piece. It's not like you're suddenly gonna play it first time because you did all that but you have worked on each building block to work through it. So now you can start to work on piecing it together. And in this series, I will have other ways of working on pieces that are not all exactly this way. And one of the ways you always wanna do if you, if you need to is isolate a couple measures at a time. So you would make sure that you can get those two, first two. And then you would work on connecting that. 
we're already almost halfway through the piece. So you get those first two measures and they repeat themselves and etc. So then you piece the whole thing together and try to play it all connected. Let's move on to a very important element of expression that we want to use, something that's going to help our playing a lot. We don't just want to execute the notes, we want to be expressive with it, we want to sound expressive with it, we want to uh, feel connected to it emotionally. One of the strongest ways to do that is with dynamics, playing louder, playing softer. So let's talk about that with this piece here. Uh, in this piece, the way I would point it out is to, I would just recommend playing the bass melody, the bass notes that are moving, uh, by digging into them. So they're nice and bold, and then this part, play much softer. Notice how effective that is, as opposed to... That's the sound of everything just being the same. Da, 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 da. And at the end, I just got quiet in general. So my recommendation is to play the melody moving lines that are in the bass louder, digging in a little more. Trying not to let that make your top note much louder. You don't want it to be... Uh, want to try to have this voice up on the top be the same the whole time but just anywhere there could be a distinction play with it for yourself I like to kind of start soft and kind of start low and then build up the volume with these moving bass lines that are moving especially if something is going up uh, is moving upward in pitch it's a great time to kind of slowly get louder so playing with dynamics and we'll talk about a couple more versions of how to do that in other pieces in this series we're going to do a harmonic analysis in one second, but a critical, critical bonus tip here, and I'll bring this up at least once more in the series when it's relevant, but this is just so important. Definitely only put your fretting hand fingers down when you need them. Let's jump to looking at measure six here, okay? And let's just say you kind of recognize that chord shape, and we could use anything as an example, but you do not want to put this down and this down when the measure starts. Okay, so you wouldn't want to put this shape down. That's going to cause a lot of tension. You're going to be transitioning and feeling like you got to jump to a chord shape. You just put down this note by itself, and then when it, when you need it, that D note with the fourth finger, third fret, you put it down, and then when that G sharp, first fret, third string, you put it down when you need it. And that's how you do everything. Okay, notice how I'm doing that. That's how you do all of it. So don't jump to chord shapes uh, that you recognize, especially, or try to get fingers down that you don't need. Just put them down when you need them, when they come up. So I'll give you the slow demonstration you can practice along with and work towards soon. But at first, I want to do a harmonic analysis of this piece. And I want to do this in all the videos in this series. This is important to me, even though it's making the videos longer. Um, I really want to show you what, basically just tell you what chords are happening here, because it's so simple. And there's so many similarities you're going to notice between all these pieces, how they're kind of, many of them are similar progressions, and a lot of classical music is. And it's going to be just what you're used to if you play any sort of songs or chords or been exposed to any other music or lead sheets or something like that. So this is A minor chord, this is A minor, this is A minor, this is A minor. So four measures of just A minor. And then it goes to E7, 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 E7. This could be thought of also as just E major, E7, but I think of all this as E7. So A minor, E7 in the key of A minor, that's the one chord and then the five chord. Okay, and then it goes back to A minor for one measure, and then it goes to something that looks a little bit like a D minor chord, but it's not, it has this mysterious sound, and we could call it a D minor six chord, but actually in classical music, this is very common. It's a first inversion half diminished chord. So this is B half diminished, and then it goes to E major, and then back to E minor. I'm sorry, A minor. So. B half diminished first inversion. And if that's all confusing, just don't sweat it at all. But for those of you that have been, been exposed to any sort of jazz theory, you're probably familiar with two, five, one. This is a minor two, five, one. Half diminished off of B, that's the two of the key of A minor. 
And I have a video all about the chords through minor keys. I'll put a link to that in the description. We talk about that kind of stuff. So two chord, five chord in A minor, that's E, and then lands on A. So two, five, one, that type of harmony, functional harmony is happening in classical music, jazz music, popular music, and it's all more the same than it is different. So just the aesthetics and instrumentation and orchestration often are making it sound like a different genre, but harmonically, so much of the same stuff is happening. So that's why I wanted to point that out. Let's go into the demonstration. I'm gonna do a slow demonstration that's meant for you to be able to practice along with. You can work towards it. You can come back to it uh, to have a goal for yourself, which is very helpful when practicing to see if you can play along uh, with this piece with me. I will not use a metronome. I'll just try to keep a pace and start nice and slow, and hopefully we'll be playing along together. Just a reminder, you can get this sheet music for free in my solo guitar arrangement pack. Go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon or cl click the link in the top of the description to get that. I have a bunch of music in there, and this and every piece in this series is in that pack as well. Here's that slow demonstration. One, two, three, four. That's it for this lesson. I post a new lesson video every week. I hope to see you in the next one, and I hope to see you in more videos in this series. Take care. Thanks so much, and happy practicing.